Hey friends, today I am back at Epcot and I'm so excited to be able to walk around World Showcase, drink some beers and eat some food without wearing a mask and also ride some rides and just enjoy this beautiful park. So let's go do this. This is my first time being back to Epcot since they actually made the new mask rule where you don't need to wear your mask outside. And like I said, I have been waiting to enjoy this park without the mask. It's one of my favorites just to walk around and enjoy the atmosphere. Also, I think I'm gonna be getting something to eat at a restaurant that I haven't eaten at in a while, only because I noticed that they sell banana pudding. And for some reason, I've been craving banana pudding. Isn't that the weirdest thing? I mean, I love pudding, I love rice pudding, but banana pudding, it's been something I've been wanting. Looks like they're giving out free applesauce samples. Um, yes, I will take some of those. Free? Perfect, thank you. Oh, well, is it uh, different flavors or? Just pear. Just pear. I mean, hey, beggars can't be choosers and I love it. <laughs> They're giving out free applesauce. This is gonna be so delicious. I feel how cold it is. Oh, look at that. Oh, I've never had a pear applesauce before, but I can't wait to try it. That is really awesome that they're giving out free applesauce. And a lot of people I can tell are a little skeptical because, you know, it's hard to understand that something's free at Disney. So like they're just walking by like, oh, okay. They're probably wondering if they're gonna get sold a timeshare. I have seen companies before giving out free things in the parks. It's really nice to see that actually coming back. I used to come up here and hand out uh, umbrellas and ponchos. I used to buy like 30, 40 umbrellas and I used to come up whenever it was a rainy day and hand them out. And uh, some people are just, you know, skeptical. So, you know what I mean? I can, I can understand that, but not me. I'm all about it and I can't wait to try this, so. Ooh. It doesn't taste like a pear, it just tastes like applesauce, but I like it. It's refreshing too. I could not have asked for a better day to come out to Epcot. Look at those blue skies. The trees are in full bloom. I'm loving it here today. Oh, I'm so excited. I am very excited to actually walk around and drink a beer or a coffee. Not having a mask is such a great thing, but just being able to drink and eat without being stationary is like one of the most exciting things for me. And I think I'm gonna start by getting myself a refreshing honey beer at the Honey Bistro. I love the beer that they have here. I actually like almost everything they have here. It's nice to see Flower and Garden still going on. I'm ready for food and wine to come though. This is the first magnitude Honey Blonde Ale. And like I said, just to be able to walk around World Showcase, listen to that music and sip your beer. That's good. That's the good stuff. It doesn't seem like the crowds are heavy today at Epcot, but I think we're just gonna keep walking around World Showcase, head on over to get something to eat in that banana pudding, and then maybe back to Future World so we can ride some rides. I definitely been missing Test Track and Soren, so hopefully we'll get on one of those. I also hear that the Grand Fiesta Tour got their animatronics back and the band is back together So maybe we'll take a little ride on that just to see how the how the animatronics look I mean, they're probably the same but just to just to give it a look, you know I'm not too sure if I mentioned it or not But the banana pudding is located at the Regal Eagle Smokehouse, which is in the American Pavilion So that's where we're gonna head to so we'll probably get ourselves some banana pudding and baby back ribs You know that sounds like a great combination I feel like I haven't eaten at Regal Eagle for such a long time and I never knew they had banana pudding and I seen it actually in a picture and I was like wow that looks good where is that from and then I looked and it was Regal Eagle and I was like I gotta go check that out here is a look at the menu they've got Kansas City smoked chicken Memphis pork ribs Texas beef brisket North Carolina smoked pork butt and then for desserts we got banana pudding and a fresh watermelon cup not too sure what I'm gonna get for my entree I know I'm getting the banana pudding since that was the main reason I came out but I think I'm gonna have to browse a little bit to see what I'm gonna get first I decided on getting the Memphis pork ribs and also the barbecue beans with burnt ends 
but I did a mobile order and I have a little bit of time before my window. So I hear the Marache going on over there in the American Gardens. So I think I'm gonna go over there and check them out for a little bit while we wait until it's our turn to get our food. Now that our food is ready, I'm gonna have to put my mask on to go pick it up, but I do wanna dine in there just to get some AC because it is a little hot out. And once we get to our table, we can take our mask off. And I haven't been in here in a while, like I said, so it'd be nice to kinda, you know, look at all the cool Muppet stuff that's on the walls. Looks like we are at mobile pickup three. Yep. We'll see if this is where we have to be. Hi. Hello. Picking up for Morrow. It also looks like we get our own drinks now. That's something new that I haven't seen yet because normally you actually have to have somebody actually pour your drinks for you, but now they actually change things up a little bit. Now I have a table. Let's take a look at what we're working with here. I don't know what I should eat first because, you know, I, I, I always traditionally eat dessert last, but today I feel like I should go banana pudding first because I think banana pudding on top of barbecue is probably better than barbecue and then banana pudding. Does that make sense to you? So here is the garlic bread or the Texas toast. The barbecue beans with burnt ends, the ribs, which is kind of like about a half a rack of ribs, and then the banana pudding itself. All of this together cost me $20 and I got a cup of water. And like I said, I think I'm gonna go with this banana pudding. Look at that, it looks so good. I'm very excited to try this. I wanna make sure I get a good bite because down inside there, it looks like they have a little caramel. So I wanna get the pudding and I wanna get a wafer all in one bite. So here we go, and like I said, I've been craving banana pudding for a while. So very highly anticipated, I'd say. Down there in the middle, you have a nice cakey texture. Of course, you got the uh, wafers up top, but I like down down there, because that's where the good stuff is. I don't know if you can see it well from the side, but very, very delicious. The reason I was saying I think I was gonna eat the banana pudding first because I feel like barbecue has a very overpowering taste. So like I think it would interfere with how the banana pudding would taste. I feel like once I get done eating this pudding, I can eat the barbecue and it's just gonna taste like barbecue. But if I eat the barbecue first and then I ate the banana pudding, then it would taste like barbecue banana pudding. And I don't know if that'd be good. Now it's time to get down to the barbecue business. I think I'm gonna start with the ribs and I might actually use some of the sauce from the beans on the ribs. I think that would be a good combination. Now these ribs aren't really fall off the bone ribs and I know a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people say competition ribs don't fall off the bone. But let me know in the comments how you like your ribs. You like them that they fall right off the bone or do you like them like this style? I think it's like uh, maybe a 50-50. I'm not too sure but I would like to see how many people like it one way and how many people like it the other way because I always hear two separate things. All I know is I like the meats and I don't care if they fall off the bone, if they're stuck to the bone, as long as the meat tastes good, all I care about. Like I said, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of these baked beans to like get uh, like my barbecue sauce or my flavor for my ribs. Maybe a burnt head too. Yeah, so we'll take a burnt end, some baked beans, and then a little bit of rib right there, all for one bite. Perfect. That's a lot happening right here. I really hope I don't get any of this barbecue on my t-shirt. I had a barbecue stain on my white t-shirt. She was killing me in that mini skirt. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> it almost happened. That is so delicious. I love the beans and the burn ends were fantastic. The ribs, kind of like a, not too much meat on there. I don't think they give you a big enough portion for the $15 price tag. I feel like they should definitely give you more of a, a half rack. I think they may give you one, two, three, four, five. So five total rib bones in there. And I don't know, what do you think? Five rib bones for 
$15 seems a little high. Last time I ate here, I think I was saying how much I love Polite Pig's barbecue compared to here. Kind of feel the same way. I mean, it's good barbecue. It's a good quick service, especially in the world of where quick service just focuses on hamburgers and chicken sandwiches. It's nice to toss up a little bit of a variety. And like I said, if you're in Epcot and you're going for some barbecue, it's probably the best spot to be. But if you're looking for barbecue, I think Polite Pig is a little bit better. And definitely anything at Fort Wilderness. I love eating at Fort Wilderness. I can't wait for the hoopty do or Trails End to open back up. I'll be there on opening night if it does. But now it's time to move along. I'm happy we came for the banana pudding though. That was worth it. Really, really good banana pudding. I wouldn't expect that either. I forgot that while I was gone away, the new gelato stand opened up in the Italy Pavilion. It looks like it's very, very popular, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to eat there today, especially since I just had that banana pudding, but maybe we'll come back, and there's another restaurant in the Italy Pavilion that I didn't dine at, and I think that's Tutu Italia, so maybe we'll come back, eat there, and then maybe come over here and do this. Another video, though. Another night. <laughs> just look at the amount of people in here. That must be some good stuff. I mean, that's a long wait. It's crazy to think the only time I had to put my mask on today was when I went to go get something to eat. But in the past, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, anytime I watched our World Showcase, the only time I was able to take my mask off was when I was eating. So it kind of just flip-flopped. Isn't that crazy? Now we're gonna make our way over to Mexico. We're gonna see if there's a long wait to actually get into the Grand Fiesta Tour. And if not, then maybe we'll go for a nice tour. Sometimes the wait just to get inside the pavilion has been like honestly 20 to 30 minutes and then maybe about a 15 minute wait once you get inside. So that's why I said maybe. Now sometimes they have separate entrances to get into the pavilion. So if you're going to get into La Cava, they actually have a separate entrance so you don't have to wait in line to get into the pavilion. So we're gonna see if that's open and if it is, then we're gonna get ourselves a drink. Oh yeah, take a look at this. So this is the line to get in the pyramid. And then right here is the La Cava del Tequila bar right here. And you can go through here, it's a separate entrance. How fancy is that? I'm not 100% sure though that once you get inside La Cava that you can actually go to the Grand Fiesta Tour once you're inside there. So I'm not sure if this is going to be a win-win or lose-lose, but we're going to find out. I mean, <laughs> we're going to roll the dice. It's also really cool just to be able to see the backside or the show building for the Grand Fiesta Tour. Here it is. I like it a lot. Like This is cool and I'm not too sure if we're going to be able to go to the ride after we go through to uh, La Cava. But also I want to point out to the side here, in between these two walls you can see Test Track and I can hear it going round and round. See like the little barrier right there? That's kind of fancy. Then you come up on this side and... Like I said, you got your own private entrance way here. Hi friends. I guess you can maybe. Holy moly, that is amazing. You can just walk in that way, grab yourself a beer, and then just go ride the Grand Fiesta Tour and you skip that whole line outside. I am like, that's a, that's a, that's definitely a tip or a trick. Wow. But it's also important to point out that sometimes the line for La Cava can be a little bit long, so you might be waiting there for a while. But I only waited like two minutes, and I definitely think outside was longer than a two-minute wait. So now we're going to be able to finish up our beer and the nice AC, and then we're going to go on the Grand Fiesta Tour. Now we're finished up, it's time to get in line. And I would say it's about a 10 minute wait here, maybe 15 minute wait. So if you wait 20 minutes outside, 15 in here, that's a 35 minute wait. And I feel like that's a long wait for the Grand Fiesta Tour. I mean, the ride's fantastic, but if you come back here at night, there's probably not a single person waiting. Bienvenidos. For your safety, remain safe keeping your hands, arms, feet and legs inside the boat. And if you have children with you, please watch them.
Their triumphant return. That was great, and it was awesome to see a nice triumphant return for the three Caballeros. And now we're gonna move all the way out of the Mexico Pavilion, back over to Future World, and just see what we could do over there. Maybe ride some rides, get another drink. Who knows, it's Epcot. Look at that line though. Honestly, I don't know if they have the La Cava entrance open every single like day, or if it's just the weekends, but I would do that every single time. Next week, it's gonna be Memorial Day weekend, and it's gonna be very busy in the parks, and it's gonna be hard to get reservations. So I don't know how often I'm gonna be able to make it out, but like when you're an annual pass uh, holder, you get three reservations at a time. So if I want a day in the future, uh, then that limits me down to two, and then if I want another one, that limits me down to one. So then trying to get a park reservation the next day for like tomorrow is such a struggle. If you guys know that struggle, you know what I'm talking about. I'm in there like kind of treating it like fat like fast pass used to be where you have to go in and like back in and out in and out and it gets tough but sometimes seven eight o'clock in the morning you strike gold and you're like yes I was gonna head on over to test track but it looks like test track is down there's no way there wouldn't be a line on the outside at five o'clock in the afternoon that would be impossible so I'm just gonna assume that it is closed Especially with the gigantic amount of cast members standing outside. Oh wow, I think it's turning on right now. Holy moly, did I just get like super lucky and walk over here just as it actually starts back up? No, I definitely wasn't that lucky. I waited about 25 minutes just to see if I would hear a car go around, but nothing. So it might be down for a little bit, maybe a couple hours. I think we can actually go and do something else instead. But I was like, fingers crossed, that would have been amazing because then you just walk on the ride. Whenever a ride goes down, the best feeling is getting right there when it reopened because then you skip that whole entire line that would normally be there. But not today. <laughs> We'll just head on over to the other side of Future World to see if we can ride a ride. The only down part of that is whenever Test Track goes down, it makes all the other rides wait times go up because when Test Tracker is running, it definitely alleviates the wait time for all the other rides. So we'll see what these wait times are. Maybe we'll uh, be able to go on Figment. That would be fun. Oh, but take a look at this. Chip and Dale are out in the garden playing right now. Usually we see Joy or Pooh Bear over here. You don't get to see Chippendale that often. <laughs> awesome. Hi friends. What are they doing all the way up on that grassy knoll? Are they playing hide and seek almost? <laughs> Look at this. That is so amazing. <laughs> That was a real nifty surprise seeing Chippendale out in the grass like that. And since we're over here, I think we're gonna hop on Journey into Imagination. Doesn't look like Test Track made that a longer wait. It's still a five minute wait. So it's basically a walk on. And I'm not too sure why. I love Figment. I think it's a great ride. Five minute wait, look at that. And we're definitely gonna be able to cool off. My favorite scene in here is actually in the uh, sound room because I love when they turn on the fans in the dark. It's a great way to cool off. Oh, 
Welcome, welcome, welcome to our special drive through open house. I'm Dr. Michael Channing, Chairman of the Imagination Institute. Hello, on your tour you'll see how the five human senses can help capture your imagination. But you've got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. <laughs> now I've completely lost my train of thought. No, you haven't. Continuing now, if I may, in a calm, scientific, frequent-free manner, the things we see with our eyes can control the eyes of the imagination. Uh, let's begin by using the eye chart to test your vision. Now, all together, if you would please read line three and hit it. And you can see things differently. Turning this entire open house upside down. Upside down? Now you're talking. That's the best idea you've had all day. With just a spark of inspiration, I've made my house works the best when it's set free. You said it, Doc. Imagination is a blast. That was fantastic. A nice way to cool off and relax. A nice journey into imagination. I love that ride, like I said. I'm shocked that a lot of people don't like it as much as they say that they do, but I will give it high praise all the time. And I think that's gonna do it for me today. I mean, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I walked around World Showcase, got to have some beers and enjoy them as I was strolling around. Banana pudding, ribs, and then, oh, free applesauce. Actually, the free applesauce card is gone, so they might only do it during the day. Huh, that makes you think. I think I need to come more often during the day. Anywho, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye!